Alright, so it's just me and you. I have a list. <laughs> I made a full a long list, list. Yeah. of everything, right? So we're just gonna go through it. Cool. For everybody out there who thinks that this is turning into a drama channel, I'm about to take Jake Paul to teach you about why anxiety is awesome, as well as some neuroscience. <laughs> what is up everybody, this is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about mental health. So what I like to do is pull things from the YouTube community. I've made a ton of Shane Dawson videos, and I like to pick little mental health topics to try to teach you how to improve your mental health. So if you're into that kind of stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell, because I have a ton of videos and even more to come about the finale. So this is a video that like, I, I was actually talking about this in my live stream about, you know, we, those of us who struggle with anxiety, we often think about all the negatives, right? We think about the negatives, all, all these bad things about anxiety, and anxiety sucks, but there are actually some benefits to having anxiety. So I'm gonna talk about that in the second half of this video, but I'm gonna talk about uh, neuroscience first and kind of explain Jake Paul's reckless behavior, okay? Now, something I always say is, I'm gonna give you a reason, I'm not gonna give you an excuse. I don't think that this is a good excuse for crappy behavior. This is Martinez twins. Um, they came out, they made a video saying you bullied them, they used clips of the videos, you were destroying their room, you were, you know, chaining them to things. <laughs> especially one of the examples that I'm gonna give in this video. So something that was brought up by one of my lovely subscribers the other day was the prefrontal cortex and how some of Jake's behaviors can be explained by the prefrontal cortex. So real quick recap of the prefrontal cortex. Prefrontal cortex is a part of the brain that separates us from the animals. The prefrontal cortex is responsible for a lot of things um, like self-awareness, emotional regulation, impulse control, all of that. Well, the prefrontal cortex doesn't fully develop until your mid to late 20s. Some journals say that it doesn't fully develop in men until your early 30s, okay? So when you look at this, when you look at somebody like Jake Paul, who's had all this reckless behavior, lighting beds on fire, jumping off roofs, speeding around, doing all sorts of stuff, right? Wake up! This is Spain. Spain, man. No, this is Spain. Bro! We also have to remember that their brain is not fully developed yet, okay? Even though they're like of legal drinking age, they can legally join the military, their brain is still not fully developed. So the, the one function of the prefrontal cortex that I wanna talk about specifically is fear modulation, okay? Fear modulation, what does that mean? Fear modulation is the brain's ability to tell you what you should and shouldn't be afraid of, right? So one of the reasons that young people are so reckless is because they don't process fear in the same way. This is something that drug addicts and alcoholics also struggle with. Science has proven that drug addicts and alcoholics have a prefrontal cortex that is not functioning properly. So they don't get scared the way they should. So for example, drug addicts and alcoholics, they don't think that they're gonna get in a wreck while driving drunk. They don't think they're gonna overdose. But with uh, young people, such as Jake Paul and other reckless young people, they don't think that speeding around is gonna involve a car accident, right? They don't think that jumping off a roof is a bad idea. They're not afraid. Young people think they're invincible. Like this isn't just a cliche thing, it's actually how the brain works. So again, these are reasons, but they're not excuses. And something that came up in this video, which was interesting, because in my last video I talked about how Shane kept calling Jake out on different things over and over and over again. Shane talked about how one of his friends was pregnant like a couple years prior. One of Shane's friends was pregnant, okay? And in a parking lot and Jake Paul and his friends, they weren't even vlogging or anything, but they were speeding through the parking lot and like Shane's friend like hit him up and said, yo, Jake Paul almost killed me, right? And she was like, that Jake Paul kid literally almost killed me, my baby. I'm so pissed. Like, what do I do? Like, I don't like, and I was just like, Whoa, so I think it's one of those things where I don't think you would do that stuff now from what I saw yesterday But why do you think you were doing stuff like that at that time? So immediately like Shane Dawson's like what the heck and this this is an issue This is an issue and by the way 
This is one of the reasons why young people need to meditate. I've been teaching my son meditation since he was like five or six years old because meditation actually helps strengthen the prefrontal cortex. Every time you meditate from anywhere to five to 10 minutes, it's like doing a bicep curl for your prefrontal cortex. So a lot of Shane's, uh, not Shane's, but Jake's behaviors can be explained due to um, the lack of, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for, Zach? What's the word I'm looking for? Maturity. The lack lack of maturity of the prefrontal cortex. Again, it's a reason, it's not an excuse, but like I think this is a good thing to talk about. We need to understand how the brain works. Like I made a video a long time ago called The Brain Mechanic. The more you understand how the brain works, the better your mental health will be. It's the same thing as a mechanic. A mechanic doesn't get as nervous when their car breaks down because they understand the vehicle. You will not be so stressed about your mental health when you understand how the machine works. That is one of the reasons why I am such a big neuroscience nerd. I want to know how this thing works so I can work on, okay, should I be freaking out about this? Should I not? Or I can say, oh, this is just my prefrontal cortex not working the way it should. Oh, this is my amygdala making me anxious. Oh, my default mode network is going nuts right now. You know what I mean? Like, I can understand what my brain's doing so I don't get anxious about what my brain's doing. And that transitions us smoothly, transitions us smoothly over to the topic of why anxiety is awesome. So. Did you know, did you know that on average, people with anxiety, like moderate anxiety, I'm not talking severe anxiety, but, but moderate anxiety, these people are statistically more likely to live longer, all right? And, and the reason why, remember we were talking about um, fear modulation? Well, anxiety is a fear-based mental illness. So this is why anxiety is good because when we have anxiety, we don't do stupid stuff. Like Jake Paul, we're afraid. We're afraid, we are the people who always put our seatbelts on. We're the people who are defensive drivers out on the road. We are the people who make sure our doors are locked. You know what I'm saying? Like, anxiety is saving your life. A little background and evolution uh, science for you is if you look at our brains and how they've been evolving for all of these years, right? And there's something called natural selection, right? So if you imagine, I made this video a long time ago, but Real quick, if you imagine two cavemen walking past uh, a cave, right? They're walking past a cave, and one of them's like, hey, let's go inside that cave and explore it. Well, the other one with a more active amygdala, what triggers anxiety, the other one is like, nah, man, there might be some lion or something in there, right? Well, the other caveman who doesn't have an overly active amygdala and anxiety, he's gonna walk into that cave and he gets eaten by a lion. So a lot of us, our ancestors actually had anxiety because it helped them survive. You see what I mean? So those of us who have anxiety to this day, anxiety is something that's actually helped keeping us alive. And I think it's important to understand this. Like, I, I'm all about empowering people who struggle with mental illness. Like, I get it, I get it, mental illness sucks. Mental illness sucks at certain points, but we also benefit in ways that other people don't. For example, people with um, depression are much more kind and empathetic than other people. People with bipolar disorder are known to be more creative. People with uh, an ADHD, they're more of a go-getter and they get stuff done because their attention gets locked in on something. So I think it's a very, very important subject for us to like sit back and look at like, okay, like, what is my mental illness doing? Is it all bad or is some of it good? Like, what, what are the pros? What are the benefits? Like, a good example is my addiction. I used to think that having an addiction was a curse. You know, even when I got clean, like when I got clean, I'm like, this is a curse. Like, man, you know, we get into that pity party. We go into that pity party of like, man, why can't I drink like everybody else? Why can't I use drugs recreationally? Mm -mm -mm, right? And like, all I think is poor me, poor me, poor me. But like the way I have to look at it, had I never developed an addiction, would I have never made this channel? If I hadn't ever, recovered from my addiction and started working on my mental health, would I have this channel where I'm able to reach thousands and thousands of people all over the world to help them? 
right? If I didn't recover from addiction, like would I have ever, would I have ever had to reflect on myself? I tell people like at the treatment center I was working at, I would, I would tell my groups, I said, you are some of the luckiest people on the planet. I'm like, there are so many people out there who are just forever going to be oblivious about their problems because it didn't manifest into an addiction, like a life-threatening thing. So there are people who are going to go to their grave still miserable because they never, they never woke up to the fact that they had these issues or their struggles in their lives. So I wanna end this video by saying, you know, I hope you're all proud of yourself. Like the fact that you're watching this video, whether you're subscribed or not, but I hope you subscribe. The fact that you're watching this video, the fact that you're watching my content, the fact that you even care slightly about your mental health, even if you came here for Shane Dawson or Jake Paul, caring about your mental health even this much is leaps and bounds ahead of the rest of the world. And you should always, always be proud of that, okay? And that's why I try to make these videos and reach as many people as possible because we need more people to care about their mental health, okay? But anyways, did I tell you, did I tell you in that intro? All of you who thought this was a drama channel, we just talked about anxiety as well as neuroscience. Mic drop. <laughs> but anyways, anyways, I wanna hear from you guys down in the comments below, okay? Let's do this. How do you think your anxiety has kept you safe, all right? Down in the comments, let me know how you think your anxiety has kept you safe in certain situations. Maybe you didn't walk down a dark alley or maybe you didn't do something else risky. I can't wait to see what you guys say, all right? Anyways, that's all I got for you with this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge thank you to everybody over on Patreon. We have a ton of new people supporting the channel over on Patreon. If you would like to help me spread a message of hope, go ahead or click or tap on that icon right there. All right, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.